What's going on, everybody? Special edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Saturday, August 3rd, 2024. Our weekly recap. Stu, it's been a long week. Holy smoke, Batman. Just when you thought it was safe. Just when you thought it was safe, <laughs> all of a sudden we get sniped. So unbelievable. It's long week, a lot of earnings, a lot of geopolitical stuff to cover, a lot of politics. It's everything's flying, oil's down, then it's up. Who knows where it'll be by the time you listen to this. All we know is the best place for oil and gas and energy news is right here on the Energy News Beat podcast. Thanks for checking us out. Hit the description below for all the links. Thank you to Stu and the team who do a tremendous job keeping this website up to speed. Everything you need to know to be at the tip of the spear. We've also got a great oil and gas investment opportunity. Check out the description below for a link to that. You can sign up, get the pitch deck, and then book some time to sit down. And, and we'd be happy to walk you through everything. But Stu, let's go ahead and dive in. I'm bringing it up to the team. Let's go. Let's rumble. Bricks officially announces financial system similar to SWIFT. Unbelievable. I'll read a few quotes here from the article. The BRICS Alliance, which who is in BRICS? I think it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. Okay, so this BRICS, which is kind of like almost like NATO, but not really. There's no real army associated with it. But these countries, they've created and are looking to bypass the Western SWIFT system and replace it with its own financial mechanism. The creation of this new financial messaging system will be similar to SWIFT, will allow BRICS to basically settle trades and settle transactions without incorporating the U.S. dollar. This is un unbelievable. Local currencies will be used for trade settlements, ending the reliance on the U.S. dollar once and for all the BRICS payment system will be similar to SWIFT, can break the global dominance of the U.S. dollar. We've talked about this at nauseum on this show. Here's a quote from Deputy Chairman of the Russian State, Dumar Alexander Babakapap. I don't really know how to pronounce his name, so I'm sorry about that. The financial agenda of BRICS has the main initiative for building a new economic reality that solves both major tax credits creating our own financial messaging system for BRICS countries similar to SWIFT based on state-owned banks capable of clearing clearing settlements of counterparties from BRICS countries and the related role of the same bank. He also went ahead and said it is necessary to create new financial institutions. This is where it gets spooky. The new system must be technically compatible with the existing financial infrastructures of the participating countries, which includes integration of national payment system banks and other financial institutions at the same time. Systems must ensure a high level of security and data protection to prevent cyber attacks and unauthorized unauthorized access to the financial information. Folks, we've been talking about this on the podcast for over a year now. They're coming for the dollar. And when I mean coming for the dollar, the petrodollar is, 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 may or may not be around here in a while. We've known that they want, ever since Russia invaded Ukraine and the sanctions that the United States put on Russia, specifically basically getting them off and not giving them access to SWIFT, which is a, a payment system that allows countries to do international banking, but things are then settled in the dollar. Hence the rely on the dollar and why the dollar sometimes is the national or is the reserve currency of the world. It also has a little bit to do with the petrodollar, but this strikes at the heart of it. Now these BRICS countries are going to be able to do inter-country commerce without touching the dollar. This is crazy. The reserve status of the dollar is slowly dwindling. And this this is critical because this ties directly into energy again with the petrodollar. Right now, if you want to trade oil, generally it's being it's settled in dollars, but not. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, we put, placed a bunch of sanctions on them. They've been settling trades with China. They've been they've they've not been using the dollar with China. They've not been using the dollar with India. They've been accepting rubles in return. They've been doing some other interesting stuff. So this is an all out. You can call it an assault. You can call it a swift. But it's a global realignment of the underlying financial institutions. You're going. It's again. All of those countries I just mentioned, let's go ahead and read them again. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. I mean, you're talking about Russia, India, China, UAE. Huge countries involved with both the buying and selling of oil and gas. Now they can explicitly go around the U.S. dollar. It's not good. If you are somebody who is of the mindset that we are coming into a 
recession here in the United States. This doesn't bode well because this attacks the heart of the idea that, well, the dollar will always be around because it's the global reverb currency. Well, are we sure about that? Are we sure about that? So huge story here. When Stu gets back, we'll definitely have to talk about we have been following this one for a while and we'll continue to follow BRICS getting off SWIFT. If if you have any, if you have any, uh, I wonder what it's going to be called in the first place. It's got to be called something cool. So feel free to leave a comment on YouTube if you, if you think you know what it's going to be called. I don't know if I have any good comes uh, guesses right now, but it's got, it's got to have a good name. So it will be interesting to see what it is. Vital Energy nearing a deal to buy Point Energy for one point one billion you know super interesting point energy partners is, a, is an exclusive delaware producer they're owned by vortis investments and vitals looking at, at acquiring them with about 1.1 billion according to people here quote according with people familiar with the matter said uh, in it, blah 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 what's also interesting is the is i'll read now straight from the article the deal for the permian basin focused producer point energy could be announced soon possibly as early as sunday assuming talks do not have a last minute sag according to the sources requesting anonymous anonymity this is also interesting. Some of Point Energy's assets will also be sold to a different buyer that is participating in the transaction alongside Vital, according to the sources. Those assets are low growth but produce steady amounts of oil and gas. If you go look on Point Energy Partners' website, they're pretty much an exclusive Delaware producer. They've got about 20,000 acres in the Delaware and do about 40,000 barrels a day. So it's going to be pretty honest. You know, it's, it's BOE, so we just, I need we need to, you know, hard to know what that, what that oil and gas split is. You can go check out our friends at Well Data base they'll be able to tell you haven't had necessarily an opportunity to dive in and do that but i promise you if this thing happens this may be a great a great another deal spotlight for us to cover but yeah so i think this is the wave of MA we're now in and consolidation is mainly alongside you're now going to see these smaller companies and i think a lot of what these private equity companies are doing are Maybe they see the writing on the wall and they feel like $80, $75 oil is going to be as high as price is going. They're trying to cash out. Maybe, you know, some of this stuff just falls along their traditional five-year investment cycle. So they need to cash out. But this would be an all-cash deal, which, again, obviously we need. So, so you know, m and still around here, folks. We love Vital Energy. They're, you know, in my, you know, from what I've seen from them, they're one of the, the, the most technology-focused and, and, and make it a point to be IT and technology focused. Um, so we love our friends over at Vital Energy. We wish them well. And, you know, again, anybody who takes technology seriously, we are a fan of. But looks like Vital Energy going to swoop up Point Energy Partners for $1.1 billion. We'll see if it wraps up. Maybe we'll hear about this hear about this as you listen to this Monday morning. Maybe it'll take a few more days. Well, I'm interested who this other smaller player is. Obviously, it's you you, it's, you wonder who it is, to be honest with you. If if it's it's probably not a big, it's probably not a larger company. It's probably a, you know, a smaller guy, depending on where they'll be. But, you know, when this all wraps up, we will definitely come back and bring you all of the details, guys. Amazon claims to power all of its operations with renewable energy if only that were true i'll tell you amazon announced that it achieved 100 percent renewable energy on seven years ahead of schedule that sounded really good for virginia amazon owns more data centers there than anyone else and data center energy is driving dominion energy virginia's planned to renege on its climate commitments to keep some of its coal plants online and build expensive new gas plants and transmission lines. So let's start with the good news. The claim that it had purchased enough renewable energy to match its energy use is likely true. So they bought it from somewhere else and then they're still using coal and dirty other forms of energy, but they're claiming that they're doing it. And so the consumers that are paying for it in their areas are losing the tax benefits as well as other things. So there's a lot to this story that's in here. Amazon keeps its energy demand in Virginia a secret, but it's pretty sure it's 110 data centers here use more than that. 2019 Green Priest Peace report estimated Amazon's Virginia data center demand at 1,700 megawatts in operation or under construction, an amount that would call for 6,800 megawatts of solar. Amazon rejected Green Peace's estimate. So, A, I don't trust people's numbers anymore. I don't 
trust that there are they're highlighting out and saying, oh, by the way, we have achieved this. If you say you're going to do something like this, then do it. If Virginia, the bottom line in this article is very important. If Virginia is serious about meeting the climate change, we can't blindly accept rosy claims from corporations whose central goal is not sustainability, but growth. Data centers whose energy demand isn't met on a 24 by 7 from zero carbon sources located in the same grid are not part of the climate solution. They're part of the problem. Well said. This is from virginiamercury.com. Link is in the show notes. So that one just really kind of got me worked up a little bit. Well done. Great article. Yellen says $3 trillion is needed each year to fund climate transition listen to these words very carefully yellen says three trillion dollars is needed each year to fund climate transition what we are witnessing today is the elimination of climate crisis and the energy transition the energy transition is over the energy transition is not going to happen thanks to AI. You heard that with AI with a story a little bit ago. AI is such a power hog. It is driving net zero away. And now Secretary Yellen is saying that the U.S. has to come out. Now it is saying that it has to come from investments in the business and in the government but it affects the consumers and it is a going to be an effect of impacting inflation in higher rates for everyone. What you're going to see is gigantic increases in energy. What happens when that is deindustrialization and your lifestyle changes. This article is incredibly important. Neglecting to address climate change and the loss of nature and biodiversity is not just bad environmental policy. It's bad economic policy, Yellen said. But yet they're willing to try to put wind farms in the Gulf of Mexico that will kill millions and millions of migratory birds. And then they're willing to kill whales off of the coast and the right whales are going to be endangered and they licensed more whales to be killed than we actually have in right whales. So this hypocrisy is actually disgusting. Wealthy economies around the world provided a record-setting $116 billion in climate finance for developing countries in 2022. This is a, a, a little bit of a misnomer. About 40% of it, which came from multilateral development banks, MDBS, Yellen said the banks, which include the World Bank, which charges higher interest rates for profit to go to renewable energy that is more expensive for the consumers than the projects actually put into place into the developing nations. So this goes to the ultimate point, climate change is a scam. This is now a gigantic money grab, and this is critical. Yellen says $3 trillion is needed each year to fund the climate transition. I have not heard this before, and this frightens me that they're now just calling it a climate transition. Buckle up. Kamala's much touted $5 billion spent in electric school bus program yielded 60 buses in three years. This is some federal spending at its finest. The first a tranche of the clean school bus programs two years ago, Harrison, the EPA administrator, Michael Reagan unleashed nearly $1 billion of that money in federal rebates for 389 school districts across all 50 states to help deliver a total of two 
2,463 electric school buses. Just 27 of those districts have proven to the EPA their buses were delivered and that their diesel fuel buses were replaced and been discarded. Collectively, those districts deployed a total of 60 battery electric low emission or low emission propane fuel buses. Low emission propane, that's the first time I'd seen that roll in there, makes a lot of sense for rural school districts. Low emission propane pain works. EPA anticipates that transitioning to new technology school buses will take time. I'm all in on propane. Let's go transition to propane for the buses, but let's not spend $5 billion to the EPA and hand it out for 60 school buses. That is nuts. Kamala Harris is more radical on her energy policies than Joe Biden. So when you want to take a look, I want to give a shout out to Ronald Stein on this. Ronald is one cool cat. He's got a great book. I've had several great discussions with him. Let's go through some of the key points here. No one uses crude in its raw form. Big oil only exists for humanity's addition to the products and fuels made from oil. Renewables only exist to generate a occasional electricity they can make products or fuels you cannot make products or fuels from wind or solar it just makes electricity so when you go through this more than six thousand products based on oil are being used for the health and well-being of the humanity pharmaceuticals fertilizer and and everything else kamala should know that there's no need to overregulate the suppliers of fossil fuel when she has no replacements to meet the supply chain of demands of our materialistic world she's trying to please her base there if you would so mandating evs and electrical generation from wind turbines and solar panels is mandating more usage of crude oil this is a very good validation of my theory that the more we go renewable the more fossil fuels we will use i've been saying this for years now and it really is coming to pass if you consider coal and oil and natural gas, fossil fuels, which I really think that they're hydrocarbons rather than fossil fuels, you're going to use more of them the more you go renewable. It's just the way the numbers are playing out. Texas pipeline congestion could throttle U.S. exports at a critical time. Rut row. Texas crude pipelines are nearing capacity with major pipelines between the Permian and the Porta Corpus Christi. Michael running at 90% full. Holy smokes, Batman. You take a look at that map of pipelines that you can't swing a dead cat in Texas without hitting a pipeline. And they're running at No, but we still can't get our gas to market, which is kind of funny. It is. There's some big, uh, big holes in the, from the Permian to Corpus and, and getting them out there. But Haynesville does not have that, but they're expensive more. It's a whole different market for drilling over there. Yeah. Shout out to the, the deal spotlight episode number eight that I just did with John Farrell. I'll be, we'll yeah. actually be doing a, a full marketing blast here early next week on it, but you can go check it out on our YouTube right now. We talk a lot about this specifically in the Bach and that deal that Devin did to go scoop yep. up Grace and Mill. A lot of what that did was was get that, you know, Grayson Mill has an extensive midstream capacity that they they own their own pipeline infrastructure, which is great. I'm, I'm a big fan of turning a cost center into a revenue source. Gotta love that. But the problem is a lot of it's not connected with where Devin is. So the point of all that is, why is it helpful to own midstream infrastructure? Well, if you can, if, if you're not allowed to flare, you gotta, if you, you're, you got to put your gas somewhere so you can produce the oil. It's not like you can just produce the oil and not produce the gas. So a gas takeaway, not to make money on it, because a $2 natural gas, no one's making money on it. Right. It's the ability to get your gas to market. And I think it's what it's going to I think that's the, the key thing here. I think it's what East Daily Analytics, we love them over there, are, is really saying in this in this uh, in the article. Right. One of the things that I would definitely want to do is take a look at data centers in East and West Texas. 
I'd put a data center in Midland near the Permian where you got all the offtake you could ever want sitting out there. I guarantee you because you're going to have microgrids popping up for data centers. That would be a big one. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely.